Tech Revision with Mrs. Swanee Pooh. <laughs> Hi Year 11, this is a uh, video all about iterative design, which is a design process, a design technique used in uh, real industry as well as uh, something we actually use in school. So the projects that you're currently working on those are all really good examples of iterative uh, design. Uh, I know Mr. Johnson likes to say iterative or something like that, but however you say it, tomato, tomato, iterative design means the same thing. So iterative design is basically a circular process. So that's the first thing that you need to uh, know about this process. It's a circular process in contrast to a design process that just goes in a straight line which I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in a moment. So the iterative design process, it doesn't stop once you've come up with your first good design. Now, in the NEA, I talk a lot about fixation. So um, becoming fixated with the first idea that you have. And lots of students do that. They come up with one idea. I don't want to change it. That's my design. Um, but actually, um, quite often your first design is, well, it's never your best idea. It can always be refined, improved. Um, and it's important to uh, take that first idea to your client, test it, evaluate it, and then improve it. So this process of designing, prototyping, testing, and then evaluating uh, goes in a circle. And it's repeated quite a few times so that you get uh, a much more improved final product. So imagine this is your NEA here and you've done your uh, come up with your design brief saying what you're going to actually design and your specification. We're kind of like up to this sort of stage and some of you have started to move on to sketching and coming up with different ideas. Now, this is where the iterative kind of circular process um, comes in. Just going to delete that a second. Oops, delete that a little bit there uh, because you would make a prototype of your first design, which is here. Then you might take your prototype to your client. So this example gives um, a focus group because in industry, if you were actually a designer, you would take it to a group of people who are your target market um, and they're called a focus group. In our NEAs, we take it to our clients. They evaluate the design you get some feedback, you would analyze that. And then you might sketch and improve the design to fix any problems. Then you would make another prototype. You would take it back to your client. You would analyze the problems, the issues, and you would improve that again. And you would keep going round and round and round in this circle until you have a complete, fully refined product. Okay. And there's lots of advantages to doing this in contrast to something that used to happen, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and the process is repeated until all the problems with the prototype have been identified and fixed. And then the product would be ready to go into production to actually be manufactured. So let's just go over this one more time. An iterative design process ensures the product you want to develop goes through this process of constant refinement and improvement. OK, so you go from design to prototype to evaluate to design again, and then you might go to prototype again, evaluate it with your client and design again. So as I said before, um, the previous, the old GCSE uh, NEA used to be that you would design, you would prototype, um, you might evaluate, but then normally you would just kind of make it from there. There would be very little going back to any of these stages. So what the new NEA kind of encourages you to do is to do this process where you maybe see your client, which is here, the best NEAs see their client two to three times and probably once at the end as well to get feedback on their final idea. So you can see that rather than just going along the process, I'm going to design it, then I'm going to prototype it, then I'm going to make it with very little improvement or refinement. Um, what we'd like to do now is get you to kind of keep going back, keep going back, keep improving. Um, and that is called iterative, iterative design. 
So when someone says this is my first iteration, it means like your first version before you refine and make another iteration. OK. So there are some advantages of this process. This is the massive one to begin with. You are making this product for a client. You're making it for someone to be used by someone. So um, the more involvement you have with the client, the final end user, the better your product is going to be. So that's a massive advantage. You get more involvement from your client, meaning you're going to have a better product. And eventually that turns into money, 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 because obviously you want to make a product that's going to be successful. And to do that, it needs to satisfy your client, what they wanted from the product in the first place. Doing iterative design allows you to create and test your ideas quite quickly. So you don't have to kind of wait for the research and then the designing and then the making. You can actually come up with ideas quite quickly and keep kind of refining, doing more research, more prototypes, and that can be done quite quickly. This one links to the first point. You get more user friendly products because the client has been so uh, heavily involved. And also any mistakes are corrected quickly. So you don't, for example, have your design, uh, you prototype it. Sorry about my terrible handwriting. You get the idea. You make it and then suddenly, oh, no, there's an issue and you have unhappy clients, but you've already invested and made this product with the iterative design process because you've had your client involved. They are going to be happier because you are going to spot any mistakes before they go into production. So iterative design is a really important process. Um, very important for your project, the best NEAs, the grade nine, grade eight um, NEA projects have lots of iterative design in them. Um, but it's also a process used in industry and comes up in the theory side of the GCSE specification. Hope that was useful. Uh, see you on the next video.